Welcome everyone, I'm Ricky from Tech Talk and today is my full review on the Sony Xperia 5. So the Xperia 5 follows in the success of the Xperia 1, which is still Sony's flagship device, but the Xperia 5 offers a different form factor, a little bit smaller, but still a very narrow design, but keeping that 21 by 9 cinema wide display. So today is my full review, we're going to go through a range of different features, different specs that come with the phone, also my personal thoughts having a look at some gaming and just how overall I've experienced myself with this device and would I recommend it to you for a full length of contract. To start off with, let's explore around our device. Starting at the top, you're going to find very faint antenna bars and also a microphone. So coming down the left hand side, you're going to find your SIM tray and micro SD card option. So you can have single or dual SIM and you can have a micro SD card up to 512 gigabytes, which adds loads of extra storage for gaming, music, media anything you want to do you can store a lot more on your device so when it comes around to weight and also thickness how does it feel it feels quite solid in your hand like i said it's quite narrow design so i can easily hold it in one hand and use it with one hand wherever i want to go but the weight is 164 grams which i think is a nice good solid size and its thickness is 8.2 millimeters thick here so you know you have a device in your hand. When it's in your pocket, you do do that quick tap down to make sure you have got it in your pocket because it is very narrow. Whereas like my Huawei Mate 20X 5G, it's quite a large device. I know it's definitely in my pocket. So turning down to the bottom, you've got a microphone, got a USB-C, 3.1 for charging and syncing your device, and one of your two dual stereo speakers. Coming down the right hand side, there is loads of buttons here. I think they put them all down one side. So at the bottom you've got your camera button. Coming up from that, you then have your power button or sleep wake button. In the middle is your fingerprint sensor, so side mounted fingerprint sensor, which is really fast. Let me just demonstrate that to you now. Quick tap, it's open. I do know faster options. There are faster options out there and I might have just shown you one previously on the channel. So go and look at the Nova 5T. So above that is also your volume controls, but sadly there's no textual difference between any of these buttons or color differences, which is a shame. Obviously your fingerprint sensor does sort of concave inwards a little bit into the device and does feel tiny little bit different, but not too different enough. I believe Sony could do a lot more here. So then moving on to the front of our device, what we're gonna be looking at all the time and enjoying all of our content, all of our gaming and everything we do on our smartphone. And that is the display, of course. So this is a 21 by nine cinema wide 6.1 FHD plus with a resolution of 1080 by 2520. It offers HDR OLED, which is powered by the X1 engine for mobile. So your display is fantastic. It's one of the best I have seen recently on smartphones and it's just enjoyable. Obviously the 21 by nine aspect ratio pulls you in and it makes the producers of films enjoy the way the films are supposed to be watched. And that's 21 by nine aspect ratio. And the other great thing is you can actually record in a cinema wide option. So you can actually record great films in great detail on great quality and view them back on this awesome display. So then we have our front facing camera, which is eight megapixels. It's an F 2.0, offers HDR. So there's a lot more features in there, but I'll talk a lot more detail when we go through the actual main camera and talking about the rear camera. So talking about the rear camera, flip round to the back here, you've got a lovely shiny black design. The love fingerprints, we've got Sony here as well. So looking at our different cameras, we have different options. They're all 12 megapixels in size, but they all do different things. So the first one is 12 megapixels, 26 millimeters, and it's a versatile lens. This offers f1.6 in aperture, optical image stabilization, and hybrid OIS and EIS, which is electronic image stabilization for video stabilization. So when you're recording video, your next lens is 12 megapixels, 16 millimeters, super wide angled lens, which is an F 2.4. It offers steady shots with intelligent active mode, five axis stabilization. That means your super wide angle pictures are gonna look stunning. And I have taken some when we went and checked out the NFL. Then finally, you have a 12 megapixel, 52 millimeter portrait and telephoto lens that offers F 2.4 aperture, optical image stabilization, and it also has the hybrid OIS and EIS video stabilization. So coming back around to the front, let's actually jump into the camera app here down at the bottom, or you could press the button down at the bottom right hand corner to take a quick shot as well. So there's 
loads of different features inside here that you can change, adjust, manipulate to make these photos the way you want to. So I'm going to read out some of the details, what you can do with this device, but also while I'm doing that, I'm going to be showing you around the application and also sharing you some of the shots I managed to take. So you have the option to use a Cinema Pro powered by Cine Alta 21 by 9 movie recording. So you can take the movies like the professionals do and actually enjoy movies played back in that style as well. You can look at color management presets. It offers 4K HDR movie recording. It has Bison X for mobile, raw noise reduction. It has eye autofocus, which means it will follow and track someone's eyes. It has up to 10 frames per second autofocus. It has dual photo diode, RGBC IR sensor, steady shot, as I talked about, two times optical zoom, five times digital zoom, HDR, which is high dynamic range photographs, which can look absolutely stunning in the right light. You have hybrid autofocus, that's where it uses the EIS and OIS. You also have 3D creator bokeh effect, so you can enjoy having bokeh effect. Plus there's so much more as well that you can go through and enjoy with your smartphone. So there's loads to do, and I do recommend you delve in and really have a good look. If you would like me to make a dedicated camera review, please do let me know. That means that we can dive in and learn a lot more, but you won't be disappointed with the results that you get from the Sony Xperia 5. So moving on to power and performance, how your device runs and what's actually in your device. So this is running Android 9 and the smoothest of Android 9, but obviously has an Xperia overlay, which is fine and I'm enjoying using that and I haven't come across any stumbling blocks. It just means it's a little bit slower compared to pure Android. This will get the push to Android 10, I'm pretty sure, in the near future. So I'll keep you updated with that. Also, just keep checking for a software update. It's powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 processor, which is an optical processor and one of the leading processors used in 2019. It has one core running at 2.8 gigahertz, three cores running at 2.4 gigahertz, and four cores running at 1.8 gigahertz. Its GPU, which is its graphics, is run by Adranu 640, again, one of the leading Adranu processors of 2019. Internally, you're gonna find 128 gigabytes of internal storage, but with the micro SD card, as I said, up to 512 gigabytes. That means you're getting over 600 gigabytes of storage on a smartphone. It has six gigabytes of RAM, which should be enough to power through gaming and different multitask options that you want to do, or you could just sit back and enjoy movies on this beautiful display. So while you're doing all that, you might be a bit worried about your battery. The battery is 3,114 milliamp hour battery. It offers Xperia adaptive charging. It offers smart stamina mode. I will note here, the battery does drain very quickly depending on what you're doing, especially when it comes to photography, video recording at the NFL, I noticed a massive drop in my battery performance. It uses USB power delivery for fast charging and USB 3.1 type USB-C. So that helps, that means it's going to be charged up relatively quickly again, but I just wish Sony maybe had a larger battery inside here. Don't be worried to take this out in the rain or if accident and it drops in the toilet. It is water resistant to IP6568 for dust and water resistance. I don't recommend doing that though, I just recommend grabbing your phone as quickly as possible, drying it off as well and use the old rice trick as well. I know loads of people use that. And protection is good as well. This uses a Corning Gorilla Glass 6 for protection, so hopefully it won't get damaged when dropped. If you do have an accident, I don't recommend that. I do recommend getting a case though, so please always try and put your device in a case. A couple of other extras I found while using this device. It has Bluetooth 5.0, which is really helpful for dual connection. It has Google Cast as well, so you can cast anything from Google. If you have a Google Chromecast or cast on your TV, that works really well. It has NFC for payments, so if you want to use payments. So Dolby Atmos paired with dual stereo speakers means that you can sit back and enjoy your movies in the way that the directors wanted you to actually enjoy your movies. But before we begin, you can actually use dynamic vibration. So once this starts playing, a dynamic vibration will come up. So if I turn this on, it starts vibrating to the actual sound feedback of the movie trailer here, which is really interesting. So I'm gonna turn it down, turn this up, and we'll watch the movie trailer. Spider-Man. 
some clothes on. Let's go for a ride. I think Nick Fury just hacked our summer vacation. Awesome! You got gifts, Parker, but you have a job to do. Are you going to step up or not? He's like Iron Man and Thor rolled into one. He's no Spider-Man. What is it with you and Spider-Man? But he looks out for the neighborhood, has a dope suit, and I really respect him. Sup, loser? So that was the trailer there for Spider-Man Far From Home, which is a great film. I really enjoyed watching that. And also, it is really fun using the dynamic vibration that comes with this device. So it sort of vibrates depending on what actual scene is happening on the phone and while you're watching your movie. Also with the 21 by nine aspect ratio and the cinema wide display as well, you can really enjoy the movies and you can watch the movies just the way the director wanted you to actually see the movie, which I think is really key. You can also record in stereo sound as well, if you so want to. And then one other great thing that I do want to talk about here is the PS4 remote play. So you can enhance your game as a game enhancer and also offers dynamic vibration system. So when you're gaming, you can really enjoy yourself. So what we're gonna do now is just take a minute to pause during the review. I'm actually gonna show you the PS app and how it works. Once logged in, you're greeted with all the different information you're normally gonna see on your PlayStation. So with friends' recent achievements, with their trophies, and what they've actually managed to do, what games they're playing. Plus you have your PS button down here. So down here at the bottom, there's a couple of things I want to show you. So you've got a second screen where you can use a second screen to manipulate your way around your device. And what you need to do is download another application from the Google Play Store and it will prompt you once you press that to go and download. But actually when we're here, we can use second screen and then actually I can use them to manipulate my way around my PlayStation with this option. But that's not the main one that I want to show you. We're going to press the PS button. Then we're going to actually choose Remote Play here. So we're going to have to go to the Google Play Store again. We're going to hit Install. We're going to hit Open. So it's then here we can register our DualShock controller to use this if we want to. So I'm going to press the PS button and also the button up here, which is your Share button. So press and hold these two together. There we go. We've got flinking light. There we go. Setup complete. How simple and easy was that? So now this is usable with my mobile phone. And obviously when I need to sync it back up to the console, I'll just plug in again and it'll sync back up. It says here we're ready to go and next time we want to pair up, just press the PS button. And we're gonna start. So as you can see, we have connected up now by a remote play, which is amazing. Obviously it depends on your internet, plus you need your PlayStation on in your location or just in a standby mode. But also I can use the controller here to manipulate my way around or I could use the D-pad here as well, choice is mine. But as we've got a controller, why not turn it all the way around like this? And as you can see then, I can put that down here and we can go through and have a game of something. I think the game I've got installed is Sonic. So now that is loading up on my device. Sega! Sonic
So coming home there, that was Sonic, Sonic Mania on the PS4, running remotely via the Sony Xperia 5 using the DualShock controller from Sony. Works amazing, a great added feature that you're gonna find on your Sony Xperia 5 and a well worth app using. If there's any questions, drop a comment down below and I'd be more than happy to help. So there's a couple of things that I just wanted to take from their website here and actually sort of explain in a little bit more detail. So record movies with a cinematic feel. Together with Sony's digital motion picture camera engineers, we've created a Cinema Pro based on a camera used by real creators, giving you access to professional look color management, presets, 21 by nine aspect ratio, 4K HDR and 24 frames per second settings. So which means you can record like a pro. I am really intrigued if any of you have got this device and actually filmed a video like that, please do let me know. So I'd be really interested in taking a look. So this device also is great for creators who have a Sony Alpha camera. The Xperia 5 is also the perfect companion for your Sony Alpha camera. Use your Xperia as a remote display, control your settings and photos wirelessly with the Imaging Engine mobile app. And one other thing I do want to highlight is about the actual display technology. This uses Sony's Bravia TV technology in your hand. The X1 for mobile engine, powered by Bravia TV technology, bringing HDR remote mastering to everything you watch so even streaming content has more contrast color and clarity so that was just a couple of the key highlights i've pulled from their website and i've experienced during my time but they've just put it in some better wording and it's so true it is a really good device depending on what you want to do so coming into my personal thoughts and my personal experience with this device so accessibility is key to me as you know i went through the accessibility settings and it was great to see accessibility settings at the beginning of the setup process different options to use. Also, when I filmed my accessibility video, finally, Sony has included all the settings needed for people from a broad range of different abilities. People could use this device. And that's really important. So Sony were lacking previously in the accessible market, where I found some settings weren't even there, or I couldn't get some settings to work. But with the Xperia 5, I wasn't disappointed, I wasn't let down, and that means I could use my device, and that means I can recommend it to other people as well with an accessibility need. So I'm really pleased about that. The one thing I would take away, being visually impaired, I don't like the narrowness of the device. I wish it was a bit wider. Obviously they've done it this way so you can have that 21 by nine aspect ratio and enjoy cinema quality films in the way they should be shown. But for me, I prefer a wider device. It's quite slippery as well. I do recommend getting a case for this as it does slip out your hand quite quickly. Another thing is why put everything down the right hand side? Put them some other sides. There's some other sides that you could use. There is a couple of other options. I just want to show you, but it didn't work all the time and I found it a little bit frustrating. I just wish Sony maybe uses a different way to do this. So it's called Side Sense and you tap on the side here. Works fine this time. But this means where you can open applications so we can jump into any applications here. Also, you can change and adjust anything here. So you've got your Bluetooth, you've got your Wi-Fi, and also you've got some other options. Down here at the bottom, you've got one hand UI. So that takes it down to the bottom of your device there and you can change and use that with one hand, which is really great. Opening again, the other one I want to show you is the split screen window option. So this means where you can choose applications to split screen. So I'm gonna choose YouTube and I'm gonna choose my calendar here. So two different options. And again, you have a middle bar here where you can manipulate and make either one bigger, depending on your choice, which is really helpful. And then you can also rotate it round. So you can also use two different screens at the same time as well. It knows which window you are using, which is really great. You have a slider in the middle, so you can slide and make each one bigger depending on your choice as well, which I think is really helpful. And obviously with this wider display, you could actually use two applications at once. So I can watch a YouTube video over here while I might be sharing the latest story on this side on social media, which is really good and really helpful. So coming back around here, it auto rotates around for me. Drag this down, I'm gonna show you my YouTube. Why not do a little bit of a publication push and make sure you go and actually subscribe to my channel. So we're coming up very close now to 17,000 subscribers and without you, all of these videos wouldn't be possible. So a massive thank you to everyone. So coming back home, that was the Sony Xperia 5 there and my personal review. I hope you enjoyed this video. So please leave a comment down below. Let me know if you actually have the Sony Xperia 5. Let me know if you're interested in getting the Sony Xperia 5. And also let me know what you think of the review. It's always great to get your feedback because then I can move forward and grow 
grow for 2020. As in 2020, I hope to gain 20,000 subscribers, which will be amazing. We'll do a very special video and a special giveaway of some sort. So a massive thank you to Vodafone who supplied the Xperia 5. And the link will be in the description to their website where you can go and find out further information and also about contract pricing. From me, Ricky, and the brand new Sony Xperia 5, I will see you very soon. Bye for now.